Hello world and welcome back to Harry Potter 1. Last time we started exploring the forest, I really struggled doing some mini games, and then we beat up a gargoyle. Honestly not the weirdest things that's happened in this game so far. This time we're going to go out into the forest and find some fire seas, which really doesn't sound good when you take it out of context. It sounds like we're about to burn a forest down. So coming over to this door, to the fire seed plant, like this entire area is just named after the fire seed apparently. This entire area is just fire seed, which does not help when I'm trying to find one of them in this entire forest. But never mind, I'm sure we'll manage. So over here is another save point, just in case you need it. And over here is a potion. So let's drink this Wiganwell potion just to demonstrate what this does. I could have saved this for later. I probably should have saved this for later, actually, considering what's coming up just around the corner. If I go in here, as you can see... For some reason, there is lava in the middle of this forest, and it's not burning down. It's very, very strange what is going on in here, but I think they just wanted to use something as a transition area between there and the next place, which is, if I can climb up there, some sort of fort of some sort, filled with these little bouncy guys. I can't remember what they're called, puff skins or something. I can never figure out if those like things sticking out the front of its face are supposed to be its eyes or just above it is supposed to be its eyes. I can never quite tell. So yeah, this next part of the game is all about bringing these guys all the way back over here. And as you can see, there's these vents here. That if I go over, they slightly lift me up. And there's another one here. They will slightly lift me up. But what I need to do is make that one stronger somehow. So what I'm going to have to do is bring this guy over and stick him in the other one. So... Let's come on over and let's see if I can go into first person and have a look. I think those things are above or his eyes and these things just below are like his nose or something. Okay, apparently me bumping into him woke up, woke him up. So if you shoot him with Flipendo, it will make him wake up. But I'm trying to be kinder to these animals and not just like murder and bully them. So if you go too far away from him, he will go back the other way. So what you want him to do is that. So he'll jump in that hole. And fill it up so that this now gets more powerful. So there we go. This is pretty much how this entire section of the game is going to work. There's going to be these little puff skins that you have to lead around to solve puzzles. So let's jump on this log and then collect these beans. There we go. Some more beans for my collection. Over here, as you can see, there is some more beans and one of these little vents here. So I can't get those right now. Or I can't like block that right now i can get this beam right now i've just got to climb back up there we go and then come through here as you can see we've got one vent here another vent here and then this hole which is absolutely enormous so what i need to do is probably feed these guys since that's the other mechanic of them if you feed them these green bushes if you watch what happens he'll grow inside so size so what you want to do is Grow him all the way, like have him eat two bushes. But if you want to shrink him down, if you hit Flipendo, as you can see, he will shrink down. So let's lead him over to the other bush and have him eat this. So what we want him to do is eat both bushes and that will power up this fence. So bring him over here and have him jump in this hole. I mean, this is his life now. This is basically his life now. We've trapped him in that hole. But as you can see coming up here, there's one of these, which is a box filled with Bertie Bots Every Flavor Beans. So there we go. There's five in there. And there's also a locked door. So how are we going to lock that? As you can see over there, there is a switch. So what we're going to have to do is somehow get over there. And as you can see, this vent is... I, I forgot I wasn't going to shoot them. But yeah, this vent isn't powerful enough. But we did see another one of those holes over this way. So the reason why you might want to be able to shoot the little puff skin guys to shrink them down is because if one of them eats one of those bushes and then comes in here, it won't fit in this hole. So there we go. We've trapped two creatures now for all of eternity. <laughs> wow, we are really not kind to creatures, are we? We are certainly going to fail the, the class of treating magical creatures right. I can't remember what it's called. The care of magical creatures. I mean, we've just got the card for Newt Scamander who wrote the book about caring for magical creatures. Like, magical beasts and where to find them or whatever it is. He would not be pleased with our performance. So let's climb on this vent. Hello? Okay. <laughs> I was trying to climb on it, but I went all the way... That way. That way, please. Go that way. There we go. I managed to grab the ledge and climb up. So let's go through here. 
and see what we have on the other side. So, what have we got? Lava. We have lava. We have lava and death and another save book. So they're just throwing the save books at us now. Considering the fact that earlier we were desperately in need of a save book to just be right there that we could use. Instead we have to run all the way back to the Gryffindor common room. We had to basically do what Harry does every time he gets a card. He's like, oh, I've got to run all the way upstairs. Please don't make me do it. But yeah, as you can see, this is just a bunch of lava wall to wall. Like, floor to wall to the to the trees, and it's literally burning it down. I understand that all these old games back on the PS1 needed to have lava somewhere in there. They probably had this kicking around from another game, but... Really? <laughs> it's a bit weird. I always find this a bit strange when I play this game. It's like, why is there, like, floor to wall ceiling? Or floor, yeah, floor to forest ceiling. Of, what? Bleh, bleh. Floor to trees... Lava, yeah, there we go. Okay, my brain really could not figure that out. Anyway, as you can see, as we jump across these platforms, they will break from under, under us. So we want to jump across them as quickly as we can to get to the other side. So it's not too difficult. This is fairly easy, this bit. This bit's a bit harder, because as you can see, there are beans on each platform. So as you can see, if I jump across and the game doesn't glitch for me, we can get across and get all those beans without having to jump back and forth because then you would have to wait for them to, re to reform. If I was to go back and have a look, as you can see, they reform. They reform after a few seconds, but if you fall in the lava, don't worry. It's not instant death. You don't instantly die if you fall in the lava. It's just a setback. So there's a Wigan Well potion here just in case you ever need it. So if I jump down here, grab that bean. That was a long jump. Oh, okay. As you can see, it's not instant death. It just do does a bit of damage. Apparently, Harry Potter is semi-immune to lava he can walk on lava he's jesus apparently and here we have easily the most annoying use of incendio in the game i'm pretty certain if i'm remembering correctly because you're just gonna have to watch this behold the pain that is this thing i am probably going to have to cut this out or speed it up or do something to deal with this because it is going to be so irritating here we go incendio behold this Look how fast this is. Ah! Ah! And this demonstrates how that can go wrong. I managed to do it. I managed to do it after only a few attempts. But yeah, sometimes I'm stuck here for like five minutes trying to do that. It's so annoying. But here we go. These are the fire seeds. And since, you know, Harry can walk on lava, I don't see why he can't just store fire seeds in his pocket. So there we go, we've retrieved the fire seeds. Fantastic. Oh no, apparently he has a jar. So not only can he use magic to shrink objects without ever actually learning to do so, he can also apparently summon jars from nowhere. Also, why are these potions sitting in the middle of nowhere? Who got to this point and then like left a potion here and then fell in the lava? I get the feeling that is what has potentially happened, which is very concerning. But any anyway... Let's not fall in lava and just get back to Hagrid because we've got his fire seeds. We fought this crazy, insane beast. Now all we want to do is just return to Hagrid and not die horribly in lava, which... Yeah, this is going to be fun. Jumpy jump. Time to get across the lava again. And test our jumping skills because this is where the jumping skills and platforming of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone for PS1... Water mouthful really comes in test, like gets tested, because that is a nuisance. I didn't even know that was up there. I just suddenly noticed that and thought, what in the world is that like flaming thing up there? Is that something I can interact with and get extra points? I'm always looking for extra house points. So let's jump down here, come back this way, and we are going to leave these guys here forever to struggle and die in horror and torment. They can't eat anymore. They're just stuck there, and apparently they have huge appetites, so... I don't know how long those guys last, but I get the feeling they are going to be very, very miserable. And it's all because of us. And well, the game was stuttering a bit there. I don't know if that showed up on the um, on the recording. But yeah, I think it's because the camera was getting stuck in a wall and it was freaking it out. So there we go. We're finally back out of all the lava. And we can go see Hagrid. So back through the gargoyle gates. A lot of backtracking here. Hopefully that weird stalker guy isn't here anymore. I mean, I briefly touched on it. He set, set the gargoyle alive and just came after us. It was a bit strange. I mean, I think he's a bit obsessive. He's, like, obviously a fan of Harry Potter or something. And he's just desperate to, like, get his attention. 
Senpai police notice me. <laughs> Here's a gargoyle. So yeah, a bit strange, a bit weird. But anyway, let's head back and go talk to Hagrid. Now that we've done his thing, hopefully there's a good reward in it for us. And a chocolate frog. Way, hello Hagrid. Well done, Harry. You found the fire seeds. Now I can show you what I need them for. Face our secret, mind you. Come on inside, Harry. Wipe your feet now. See, now I'm concerned they're drugs. Now I'm concerned I'm a drug mule? <laughs> that Harry is going to be a drug mule. Welcome to my home, Harry. It's small, but still roomier than your cupboard under the stairs, eh? I got this from a man in the Hogshead pub. It's a dragon egg. I need some fire seeds to give it that last burst of heat to force it to hatch. Go ahead and put them in the fire, Harry. You've done it, Harry. It's hatching. <coughs> Up you come, my beauty. Ain't he lovely? I'll call him Norbert. He's a Norwegian Ridgeback, you know. Harry, you're a true friend. I want you to have this book, Quidditch Through the Ages. Hmm, I'd better give Norbert his first feed soon. I'll see you later, Harry. Thanks again. I love how during that conversation just behind Harry, there was like the most accurate picture of Dumbledore you've ever seen in this game. It's like, he looks way better there than he did in like any of the other parts of this game. Where he got that picture from, I do not know. But there we go, this gate is open and clearly that's where we've got to go next. So we are going to leave that for next time because that leads to more things that we do not have time for this episode. So until then, like, comment, subscribe and all the other good stuff. I've been Hasty, and I will see you next time for more Harry Potter.